Hello everyone. My name is Ashish. I'm a junior doctor in the UK. In today's video, we'll talk about hyperkalemia, another very important topic for the PLAV1 exam. Hyperkalemia can be classified as mild, moderate, and severe. You can see here in the chart, there is severity on the left side and levels and millimoles per liter on the right side. If the levels are 5.5 to 6, it's mild. From 6.1 to 6.9, it's moderate and greater than seven, it's severe hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia usually presents with muscular symptoms, but it can also cause focal neurological signs. The usual presentation is with weakness, hypotonia, paralysis, ileus, and cardiac rhythm disorders. Hyperkalemia can be due to three mechanisms. The first one is pseudohyperkalemia, which is false hyperkalemia. It is caused by hemolysis, is when you take a blood sample and then you shake it vigorously that's going to lead to hemolysis and increase in potassium second one is thrombocytosis third one is leukocytosis the second mechanism is increased release from cells it can be due to cell lysis such as in burns rhabdomyolysis transfusion reactions or it can be due to medications such as digoxin heparin and beta blockers it can be due to metabolic acidosis and low insulin states. The third mechanism is decreased excretion from the body, such as in renal failure or Addison's disease, which leads to decreased aldosterone. Or it can be due to medications such as ACE inhibitors, ARBs or spironolactone. How will you diagnose hyperkalemia? So the first one can be with presenting features but many patients can present without any features. You'll go for UNEs, which is urea and electrolytes as investigations, and then you'll go for an ECG. You can see the following ECG changes with hyperkalemia. These include wide QRS complexes, peaked T waves, small or absent P waves, PR interval prolongation, a sine wave pattern, ventricular tachycardia or VFib. Before starting the treatment for hyperkalemia, always confirm whether it's true hyperkalemia or not. You can go for repeat UNEs and if you find that it was pseudo hyperkalemia, then you do not need to give any kind of treatment for this. The next step is to go for an ECG. If there are ECG changes, then you'll give calcium chloride to protect the heart membrane. This will not decrease the overall levels of potassium in the body. The next step is to go for insulin, which is 10 units of ectrapid, human insulin, in 50 ml of 50% IV glucose. The next step is nebulized salbutamol, and then you'll go for correcting the underlying cause, which can be due to acidosis, corrected with sodium bicarbonate, or diuretics such as furosemide and if it is resistant hyperkalemia then you will have to go for hemodialysis this was a very short video on hyperkalemia and i've tried to consolidate all the important points which you'll require for your plav1 exam if you like this video click the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel thank you